Hello everyone and welcome to True Potentials, The Week in Markets. Today we'll look back at some of those key events that we highlighted at the beginning of the week. I'm joined today by Matt Henderson, one of our portfolio managers, to discuss some of those key areas. I think firstly, Matt, I'd like to, to take our, our listeners and viewers to, to the US. We discussed at the beginning of the week the importance that this week would have from an inflation backdrop, the Fed's preferred measure personal consumption expenditure coming out. There was some concern, I think, rightly so, given where PPI had risen to over the course of the month, CPI as well, that the measure might come in slightly higher than expected. But what what happened in the end with PCE? Yeah, thanks, Jeff. So PCE came in um, yesterday. um, So we got measures for headline and core. So core strips out those more volatile components from the basket. And actually, we did see that those rates had jumped up in line with what you're saying, like PPI and CPI. So month on month, headline came in at 0.3, core came in at 0.4. But markets had actually been expecting a rise to come through. So although that rate of inflation has increased, Mm -hmm. it actually did come in line with market expectations. And was there much of a market reaction as a a result to it or just pretty much just walked through it and said, well, that's what we're expecting? Yeah, so markets had been expecting it. So not much of a price reaction really across asset classes. And how is it, has it in any way influenced just how we as a market are thinking about interest rate cuts or the the timing of interest rate cuts i suppose we go back to the start of the year the market was pricing five six interest rate reductions in the u.s that seems less likely but what are we pricing just at the moment yeah so market has stepped back away from those five to six Mm -hmm. uh, rate cuts by the end of the year we're closer to to about three at this point in time but that pc report hadn't really influenced that um those i suppose we're now into first of march to, to today um Originally, those cuts were meant to start in March, and that's certainly been pushed out as well. Is it June now, where there's a is it a fifty percent chance? Yeah, so come second quarter time, markets are pricing about fifty percent chance of that being the point at which we see the first cut from the Fed. And the other data from the the US that we've had over the, the course of the week has spoke to that stronger economic backdrop that we've had there in terms of the, the revised GDP numbers, but also personal income, which has been pretty robust. Yeah, so we saw that actually pick up from the December reading of 0.3 that we saw in December all the way up to 1 come January. However, there's a few factors that are influencing it. One, that measures on a nominal basis. So actually, if we try and account for the higher prices and inflation that we've seen, that's actually roughly flat. And so it's a bit of traveling and arriving. Traveling and arriving there. But again, still speaking to that ongoing positive backdrop that we've got in the US in particular from a a growth perspective across most of the data this week. Yeah, absolutely. And then maybe to to contrast that a little bit, we've we've talked about the US, maybe let's go across to to China, one of those areas that has been much more challenged in in recent months um, from an economic perspective. If we get the the PMI data each month, the first of the month, they're very quick out of the blocks in, in China. But was that giving us any pause for reflection or positivity? No, the, the data is really more of the same from China. I would say that, that you know, the PMI services side was a little bit stronger than the manufacturing side, but we're still seeing those same trends persist when you look at the subcomponents with weaker new orders, weaker employment data. So really what we're seeing is more of the same or a continuation of the data. And I suppose to an extent that the services improvement or the non-manufacturing side is may have been slightly influenced by Chinese New Year as well and how that's that's worked its way through with, with travel and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. And then we looked in, just for so that everybody's aware, next week we've quite an important event in China, the, the 14th National People's Congress, and typically that sets out some, some agenda items, as they think, from an economic and, and social development perspective. So maybe some hope that we'll hear something there um, next week. Maybe the contrast then in, in emerging markets has certainly been India and India's GDP growth today was exceptionally strong and in, in relative to developed markets, but also to China. Yeah, very much a different story that we're seeing in India compared to China. So as you mentioned, fourth quarter GDP posted came in at 8.4%. So better than last quarter's print, better than also market expectation. And really 
just continuing to see that theme of India out performance, one of the better mm-hmm. or best um, yeah market performances last yeah. year, up about twenty percent. I think when you look at the full year, I was just looking at someday. I think you're looking at now something in the region of seven and a half to GDP growth for for twenty twenty three. It's quite an exceptionally delivered performance from India over that period. And maybe just looking back now, we're just tipped into the new month. How, how did broad markets perform over over February in terms of equity and bonds, just to give our, our listeners and viewers some sense? Yeah, so global equities up about 4.3% in local terms. We've obviously had things like US earnings mm-hmm. helping to uh, increase equity valuations over over the month. Um, if we think about how that translates back into sterling, though, because we've got to consider that uh, FX effect as well, up even more, up 5.2% over that period. And Japanese equities have been the strongest mm-hmm. performer over the month. And then just, uh, I suppose, finally then, looking to next week, we've got the, the UK budget um, to come out. And certainly one of the things that we'll be doing as a, as a business, we've got a live podcast next week on uh, Wednesday the 6th at 2 o'clock. And we'll be discussing some of the key factors coming out of the budget. I think if you're interested in signing up for that, please go along to our YouTube channel and subscribe and you'll get some updates as that's that's coming through. But Matt, many thanks for, for joining us today and bringing to, to the table some of those key events over the past week.